Okay, this is part seven of working with strings, and we're going to get the last character of a string. If I sound like I'm rushing through this, it's because this is like the eighth time that I've done this exact section of the video because there were more errors than I care to mention, but that's neither here nor there. So, we want to get the last character of a string, and we're going to do so by not using a numerical index, which is to say we're going to use a variable based on the string's length. If the string was a length five, we could use the number four, but that does not going, that's not going to work for the general case. So what we need to do is, like we said, do something based on the fact that the length property exists and the string's index is start at zero. So if we consider this set, uh, that's actually the entire answer, but I'm not recording this video again. Uh, so the last character is going to be equal to JavaScript at JavaScript.length minus one. Now consider the case where a string starts at index one. So if our string started at index one, the last character in the string would just be the length of the string. Since it starts at zero, everything is going to be shifted back by one value, and so that's why we have the string in question, dot length minus one. We run this, we're gonna see t, and there we go. Let's make it a little bit more general and have our language in a variable and our last index in a variable, and then assign last character to be the language at the last index. When we do this, we're going to get T as well. We can also throw in a bunch of extra stuff, and this will be F. Excellent. With that in mind, let's talk about the challenge. We are going to complete a function that takes in one parameter, a string, and returns the input string's last character. Your function should determine the length of the input string minus one and assign it to a last index variable. Your function should also create a last variable, sorry, should create a last character variable and assign it to an expression which uses last index to access the last character in the string and return the last character variable. Below are examples of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function get last character. So, same idea. We're going to copy this stub, paste it in here. We're going to copy our test cases and paste them in as well. So let's follow our pseudocode. Create a last index variable, assign it to the last index in the string. We consult our documentation, we can see that the last index in the string is going to be the string dot length minus one. So in this case, it's going to be last index is equal to the string in question dot length minus one. Then we want a last character variable, which if we look here is going to be assigned to the string in question at the last index. So we'll say variable last character is equal to the string in question at the last index. There we go. And then we'll return last character. So if we run this, we should see A for the last character of banana. And we should see, um, I don't like how it's doing that. I wonder if it could stop. Uh, it highlights all of the A's whenever you highlight an A. Hmm, I wonder if that's code intelligence. No, code intelligence is off. Well, that's really not that big of a deal. And so A will be the last character for banana, and M will be the last character for macro firm, which is, ah, it's the opposite of Microsoft. Anyway, let's go ahead and run this and see A and M. Excellent. We'll go ahead and copy the completed function, paste it into the input window, and find out what kind of good shape we're in. Excellent. And we are in desirable model. Well, those are getting kind of weird, but... We're going to keep going anyway. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.